our next session is Pancakes, Please with Connie Copenhaver and Dana Smith. And uh, they, I got to see this one on Tuesday. They did a great job and you guys are in for a treat. I wish we really could have the treat of eating the pancakes <laughs> that they're going to be making. But since we can't, we'll just enjoy watching them. So ladies, I'm gonna hand it over to you to take away. Okay, thank you. Um, we're gonna go to our Google Classroom. I'll run everything through Google Classroom. So I'm gonna um, share my screen. So you should be seeing our Pancakes Please Ag in the Classroom Workshop 2020 Google Classroom. And um, I'm just gonna take us down through that a little bit and we'll get started here. Um, we're gonna be learning about the history of pancakes. Um, I um, taught a social emotional um, specials type rotation class in um, a school I was in for the past two years as the GT coordinator for their district. And um, I taught all seventh graders and the curriculum was um, the Covey curriculum for seven, highly effective, seven habits of highly effective teens. And it's, they also have this in a children's version. So if you're looking for a good SEL program that just kind of steps you through everything, it's a great little program and it took, um, I did it in nine weeks. And um, so I tied in a culminating activity at the end of every um, uh, facet or step in the SEL program that they have and we're of the seven habits and we're on habit three today. And we would have already gone through and been uh, familiarized from the front of the week with habit three. And this was our Friday activity. Um, so we're gonna understand how we have to do first things first in our lives. So we have to put things first in priority and um, that might be putting our homework before us before we go see a movie with a friend, those kind of things. And also in a recipe, especially pancakes, even as simple as they are, they have to have a step-by-step -step, uh, uh, purpose. And especially at the end of doing a, getting a fluffy pancake, you want to be able to fold in the last couple of ingredients in this recipe so the students learn about why it's important to do things prioritizing our, um, our life, even in a simple pancake recipe. So the lessons start with, um, we start with a greeting and Dana will reach behind us here and let's see if I can go back. Can you, let's see. Well, we have a little pig. Can you guys see us? You're just seeing the screen, aren't you? We are seeing you guys and your screen. Okay, good. Okay, here's Dana. So uh, we are responsive classroom trained teachers. Uh, we both worked at Western Heights together and I was um, elected and granted a grant to go representing Western Heights Council Grove Elementary when I was there as a fifth grade teacher and a GT teacher. And Dana has been second and third and we've known each other and taught together and um, then just, you know, we're partner team. And um, we start our meetings off, our class, in Dana's case, every morning, in my case, every hour on the hour for somebody who has a rotating schedule. And the simplest one that we do is, is Toss Wilbur. And Dana's going to lift up this little piggy and show you. This is from the Port Council. This is one of the grants that we've received. And we always get some sort of cool little item. And I have collected, I think I have three of these. And um, we use them as um, greeting and we just simply pass it around the circle for the first couple of times that we do this greeting. And then it moves to where we're tossing it and then we're tossing it across circles and saying each other's name and greeting each other. So that's where Mr. Wilbur comes in and the kids love Wilbur. Um, I use other little like, uh, you know, stress balls also uh, in that same thing that they really enjoy Mr. Wilbur there. Um, so from that, we, the next thing we do is an, a, we have an activity and our activities are usually based on either an introductory type activity just to tell what we're gonna be doing for that concept of that day, or it's a review. And in this case, um, our review was an activity where we do the, let's 
the, oh, I think we're doing Give a Pig a Pancake, and we're going to listen to the video, or we have the Hark Back, and you can get this from your library. Almost every library I've ever worked with, district-wise, has this. I encourage you to use your library as a resource and not have to invest money. Um, but so we either read this aloud or I like to watch videos a lot of the times for my books and especially with my uh, my secondary kids, the video came up well. So we watched the video about the story and we're talking, we're now remembering, we're talking about our SEL, a social emotional learning. And so we have a pro and con um, chart that I created and That's for, uh, like, if you wanted to put um, posters around. So this is the book. And next, I'm going to go. Okay, this is the pros and cons. So from the story, what were some positive things the pig chose to do versus the negative manners or cons? We're thinking about our seven habits of highly happy kids with this habit three. First things first. So in the story, as you all know, I'm sure you've read it a zillion times to your students. And if you haven't, it's a great uh, social emotional learning book. And it just talks about what happens when she lets this pig into her home. And uh, he does some stuff that the kids know are good. And he does some stuff that the kids know fall into that con activity section of, the, of, the, uh, of their uh, life. So they write those down for us. And on this one, uh, for distance learning, they could do that real easy. Um, they go over to the three vertical dots in the upper right-hand corner. And if it doesn't already have the drop-down box, that's where you go to the vertical dots. But this one opens up with an open up drop-down and you wanna go to Doc Hub. And then that's gonna take you to Doc Hub uh, Google for, the Google option will work too, and they will not distort your PDF that you created. So I created that just by going in, and um, doing an online free um, way to make a worksheet or a T chart, and I uh, just put in my own top topic and lesson for that. That's how I created that. Um, and so it's opening up to Doc Hub. This gives you and your students the ability to then get a text box. And so you click on the A, you get a text box, and you come down. And what was a pro thing that he did? Um, I think that he, he uh, waited patiently on the windowsill. To, to be invited in, okay? And a con was, uh, he went upstairs and he took a bath. His bath, bathroom habits were messy. So he left her bathroom all a mess. So those are things that we can talk to about our social emotional learning. So, and then what they do is you go up to share or send and you click on that. And you can see it says to send as an attachment, and then they send it to you with your uh, email. And it'll just pop up like it did there for me. And then all they have to do is send via Gmail or send their email, and it'll come to my inbox. And then that way I've got a copy of what they did, have done. Also, um, making sure they put their name at the top. That's the first thing. <laughs> Mrs. Copenhaver forgot that first thing, didn't she? First things first. Okay, so there's that's how you get the doc, the PDFs to be able to write on them and send them. Um, so that's the activity that we do after we do greeting. And then we would have looked at that book. This is a print off available for you. You could save this JPEG and send it to, I send a lot of mine to Walmart and get actual photographs made. So I do like a uh, five by seven and it's just like 25 cents, I think, um, to have them done five by sevens. And then that way it's already um, kind of laminated for you and you can write on it with a Sharpie. So this one I might would put, um, if I'm putting it on my, using it as my timeline, I would put like um, medieval times or uh, uh, 
Cronus and Magnus. And we'll learn that here in a minute for the timeline. Oh, hey, no. Debbie. Uh-huh. Uh, we had one person. What website again did you say you were using to create the, all this? Okay, so I just Google and I write um, like Venn diagram or whatever, T chart and KWL charts, and that's all these are. And then they let you edit. Okay. Uh, and I just Google it. Uh, I can't remember the site. There's several of them that will have these charts and you can choose different bins and different um, T charts and percentages and graphing. And then you can edit it yourself and put your like the title of your activity or something. So, Great, thank you. So there's this one again. And again, I would teach the kids, even if we're in, let's say, um, uh, I had an epiphany yesterday. I was taking an op open, open science, course through the state department yesterday because i'll be teaching sixth grade science and it's my first time to do that uh, curriculum and they've changed it most everything's moved from eighth to sixth grade and so i did teach eighth grade so that's helpful but one of the things i liked yesterday that i thought is even in our classrooms because in science i am so used to grouping my students in groups where they're working together and um they're not going to probably be able to do that for the first nine weeks until we get the COVID thing situated out. So, but they can on their, their devices. I can put them in groups just like we do when you do Zoom meetings. And so we could put them all in a group and then they can all share what they already know and that kind of stuff. Uh, so it's kind of cool that way. Or I get them and I can put them up on the projection board once they've emailed their answers to me and I can just pop up different people's what somebody already knows and that kind of stuff. So it's the same thing open with Doc Hub. And then you're going to get your text box. Make sure you put your name on it first. And you can see, see, I've already put it there. So I'm going to, let's see, put my, I think I'll put it next here. And it didn't show up. So I'm going to do that. And there maybe that's gonna work I don't know. never done it that way okay I'll just move it down here and to move it you grab it where the dots are and you can just put it right there on the white page so where it says. and then they get uh, they have their text box and to get off the text box they just click and then again, to send it, they go to the share or send, and it's send as an attachment. They're gonna send it to um, myself, teacher, and they're gonna send it. And then I will get Connie's um, KWHL chart. So I've got that, and I wanna go next. So that's before we kind of start the lesson on the pancakes. And then what I did, because I also did this with my GT students, I didn't teach the lesson first. I taught it after these, this next activity, and we used task cards. So this is the PowerPoint. People slides. So here is our PowerPoint for the lesson, and this um, kind of steps the kids through what we're doing. If we had been together in a classroom, we, this is the PowerPoint you would have seen. This is the code to join the classroom. So if you're somewhere where you could um, write this down, it's O Y K M N P P O Y K M N P P. And if you've never done Google Classroom and you don't know how to join, just Google join Google Classroom and it will take you to that uh, met that website. 
and then they'll say put in the class code and this is the class code. And here is our chart that we would have created together and I would have taken things from you and you can take it from your students. They could be seated, distant seating and that works, you know, that's something we can still do. Um, and you could have a paper version or you could do that on the web, on, uh, pull it up off of the, like I showed you earlier and put it up on Doc Hub. Um, we've already talked about responsive training. We start with our greeting. Now we've done the activity. And closing is at the end of the school day for Dana. Closing for me as a specials teacher is at the end of the hour. And um, that is hugely important, um, especially for you classroom teachers to take that last probably 10 minutes of the day and draw everybody back together and go over positive things and send them out with a positive message about their day and about tomorrow. Um, then I would have done a little Kahoot with you in the classroom. So you would have just gone to, to, to Kahoot.com, put in this code, and it's as an individually activity or a team activity. We could have done it all together. Usually when we're together, we're circled up. Um, I still circle kids even in middle school on the floor, um, or you can just pull your chairs in a circle. Um, it's pretty easy to do. And then we would have played this game of Kahoot. And you could write this number down and go to Kahoot yourself, 692214, and play that later this afternoon or when you get some time. And it's just a simple Kahoot that I made about pigs as the central character of stories. Um, here is our greeting we talked about. Remember that I got that little guy from uh, the Port Council reminding you that fall and spring, the 15th of October and the 15th of February are the due dates. What I do is I do my uh, fall in the summer and I, as soon as I get that done, I send it off. I don't wait for the 15th. And then on the spring, I do one uh, over Christmas break. And as soon as it's done, I send it off. Um, just to make sure that I've got those in. And they're well worth, and this helps you buy these ingredients. This helps you get some of the special things you need. Like if you need the book, if you want, and one of the things that they say on the uh, uh, grant app is what are you going to do to show who was the donor of your uh, grant? And I always make a poster off, off of Vistaprint, and this one's, a, uh, well, I think it was like $5. I wait, if you'll do Vistaprint, put everything you need in a, in a box. They're kind of like Old Navy. They keep sending you things. Do you know you still haven't paid for your order? Would you like to order? And guess what they do before too long? They give you like 60 and 70% <laughs> off. So you can get things really cheap if you just keep it in that box for a while in, the, in your cart. And I always tell the ag people that I put Oklahoma ag in the classroom, and then I put Oklahoma pork producers on this little balloon here. Um, and you add, you can change it and add it however you want to do that. Um, Made in Oklahoma Coalition had volunteered to give us a lot of donations if we were actually in class together. Griffin Sirt was the first to join the bandwagon. I heard from coffee vendors, Imperial Coffee, was going to set up an entire nice coffee bar and provide all the cups, the stir sticks, the creamers, the sugar, all that good stuff. Um, and then uh, Compadres and Compassion um, are nonprofits, and they were going to um, provide us with some specialty coffees. And um, so if you will go to that Made in Oklahoma Coalition uh, website, you'll see all these wonderful companies. Dana and I have contacted them every time we've taught a lesson, and they've been wonderful. Um, the other one that donated to us was Amelia's Yogurt. It's a local family-owned operation for French yogurt. And I know that not everybody can have pancakes. So when we were together, I wanted to have a protein-based uh, product, and uh, they donated some really nice yogurt. And their website's fabulous. They have lots of recipes to use yogurt, uh, their yogurt on how to make like different kinds of bread products and things like that and desserts. Um, so, I'm going to interrupt real quick. Can you let us know what that Kahoot code is again? Yes. 692214. 
692 214. Okay. Awesome. Thank you so much. Uh huh. Okay, next. Um, we've talked about the seven uh, habits of highly, of, of highly, seven highly effective habits of kids by Sean Covey. Um, we would have already done habit one and two, and today would have been introducing the habit three. And on our uh, classroom, we Google Classroom, I have the videos that go with that. Um, I will always do a video every day, a different video that they're, they're everywhere. Be careful pre-watch those videos, I promise. There's been one or two that I didn't even catch when I pre-watched. And then when I'm showing it in the classroom, I go, oh my. So, and that was with middle schoolers, so, you know. Some of them caught it, some of them didn't, but I apologized. <laughs> um, and then just um, these other things that I've talked about, you could display other pig type books in your room um, from the library. The National Pork Month is in October, so maybe you want to do this as a fall activity, and you want to get this in um, probably the spring grant, because you won't get your materials, you know, it'll be a little delayed. So if I were going to do a fall, I would have it in my spring, and then if I'm doing the spring, I would put that in my fall grant. So if the Pancake Day is in February, and National Pork Month is in October. And, um, as you would expect, uh, kids wanted protein. And since we were already talking about the pig in the book, I had kids bring um, sausage and bacon. And I had uh, great big eighth grade boys taking care of all the meat. So they, they baked all, they uh, put a meat on a skillet and they were in charge of the bacon and the sausage. And so um, I was just going to purchase all of that from Brahms, which is another made in Oklahoma company. Um, we would share those KWH, what, what everybody's contributed to that KWHL chart. Uh, you could use graph paper, um, ask for a volunteer to write the responses so your kids are engaged with it. Um, I am a huge believer in self grading and using a rubric to do so. So I have attached a rubric on that as well. And uh, make sure you're going over your expectations. This is the activity part before I do the lesson. Now you could flip it. You could do the lesson first and use this as a review to see how much your kids know. I did it with my GT kids and these older kids because I want them to get their wiggles out and to be challenged before the lesson and just be able to read, infer, and then be able to place them in a correct order on the timeline that's up on the wall. So I have this little pig. I've um, blown him up, put him on a full page, laminated it, and then I can write the date on it and then in dry erase. And then I just tack them up with a little tape and they're around the room on the, on the walls, on the cabinets, and the kids then read their cards that they get with the fact cards for task cards, and they put them with tape up on near that date line for a timeline. And I already have tape dispensed out at every station um, just so the tape is there. I model how to do the tape, believe it or not, um, I have a student model that for them so they know they can see that what a two inch tape strip looks like. Um, I set a timer just to keep everybody on track. We're going to do this for three minutes. And um, then for interactive, for distance learning, I, you can go to read, write, think. Oops. Sorry. Okay. Read, write, think and you can make a timeline. So if you're having to do distance learning, or even in class, if you don't want your kids to get up and do this in class, you could sh uh, print the cards out for each kid uh, off of the, off of the um, PowerPoint and on a sheet, and then they have to either write the times on there or um, they can go build a timeline. So this is read, write, think. They build a timeline um, with, the cards that they have. So you would give an each student the, the task cards. 
but in a group setting, you put them in partners of two to three and they get to walk the room and um, pick up the cards from one area and they have to take it to the other side of the room to put in a timeline. And then we did a whole group checkup to once, once we're all seated again and it's all done and setting that timer is very helpful. Make sure that um, they have that self grade rubric. They know that they're going to be responsible because this is a part of their grade. Um, then I, it's time for, let's see. So bakery's last. So I'm going to escape right here and I'm going to go. Here. Okay. Now we want to go to the time. Now we're going to go to the lesson. So we've got the timeline up, the kids have come back to their chairs, and we've got the lesson up on the projector screen. Or you've delivered it to them if it's doing distance learning. They have this and they go through this lesson. And this is our goal. We know pancake, that's one of the things we know about SEL. We have to have a goal in mind. And our goal for uh, you, this lesson for three was to have first things first to prioritize our life. So let's talking just about nine weeks test for secondaries. When do you wanna study for a nine weeks test? Do you wanna study the, at two o'clock the night before and hope you make that C? Or do you wanna study two days prior in that 30 minute chunks each night and then do a little review packet or a review Kahoot or something? Or make your own Kahoot about the things that you've learned about that. Um, unit of study. So you want it that you have to put priorities and goals in fashion. So this is the history of the pancake. Are you guys seeing that? Is it big? We are seeing it, but if you could go back to the present mode, that would be fantastic. Thank you. There we go. You present. Okay. So one of the funny things that I found out when I was studying about this was the uh, history of the pancake. It was as old as the Stone Age guy they called the Iceman. And um, a lot of the kids have studied him already, especially by the middle school. You'll find some of your older kids may have heard about him being found and they call him Otzi the Iceman. And that was over 30,000 years ago during the Stone Age. So that would have been pig one. I would have had um, 30,000 years ago, or I would have had Stone Age written on that pig. And the kids then would have taken this task card and put it up uh, under that pig. Um, he loved pancakes. How do we know? We have to go back to primary source items. And so we're going to take them back to this National Geographic um, website, and it is actually Otzi. And it is uh, the anthropologist and the archeologist that are um, doing a dissection of his gut. And so this is the picture I tell my girls. Now we wanna watch this before we eat pancakes because you won't want it afterwards. So you can see it's kind of blurry there, but it'll sit up and there he is. And so this is them looking in his stomach contents and they discover that he has what looks to be some sort of cake-like flour meal. And um, we talk about that he also has some uh, worm issues in his body. So that encourages my older kids. They like that kind of stuff. Um, so we take them. So I have embedded uh, links for you in the PowerPoints that take you to primary sources. So, um, we do know that's how they know that Otzi had a pancake in him and he died so quickly um, that it, it was preserved. And so that's kind of cool. So let me see. Okay. So that's part of my lesson there. And let's see. And so that was, um, the remains were over 5,300 years ago. So I might've had that on the pig. You know, I, I kind of changed them up, um, especially between kids because they might talk. 
but I think they did okay. You know, if I wanted to do it again, I had some of the same kids, especially with GT. If I'd had them before, I would kind of change it up. Um, then we have the Greek and Roman era, and we talk about that pancakes were made from wheat and flour, and we talk about that that's what we use today. Uh, they talked about how that they used olive oil for their oil, where we're going to use vegetable oil. They used honey for a natural sweetener. We're going to use granulated sugar, and they use curdled milk, and we talk about what curdled milk is, and that's buttermilk in, the, in our day and time, and how do you curdle milk, and how does that process happen? happen. So that kind of goes along with some of our sciences for um, most of the middle schools and up in Colorado, fourth and fifth graders were doing chem. So they were even having to learn the chemistry chart. So I don't know that that's happened in Oklahoma yet, but they, mm -hmm. they were having to learn the periodical chart. So we talked about chemistry. Then we talk about the uh, poets. Um, my gifted kids already knew who Prentinus and Magnus are, and we talk about the pancakes and their poetry, and that takes us to another primary source. And we read the poetry, and we help, um, talk about how we have to use primary so sources to be able to say that this is a true statement when we're, uh, especially if we're doing research. And so we go through and we um, read some of this and talk about the poem. I think the poem is down here. Uh, here it is. Kratnos tongue in cheek depicted himself to be the greatest comic poet of his day. And then we go through and talk about uh, his wife and how he dreamt a joking insult he could throw at Ero Erostrophanes, I think. So that's that was in there because my, my kids had done some, had already previously done Greek and Roman, a lot of Greek poetry. Okay. So then they would see um, who put up the only pancake race in the 13 and 15th centuries. And that talks about a uh, show Truth Tuesday. We talked about the, that that still continues today. Um, and it became a tradition. And we talk about the year 1445. So I might have put up 13th to 15th centuries, or I might have put 1445. I try to kind of make it a little difficult sometimes. I think on my GT kids, I put up Shrug Tuesday um, for them to find that one. Shakespeare and pancakes, another primary source. And in the Renaissance period, pancakes were uh, flavored with spices, rose water, sherry, and apples. So we talked about how we can change up our pancakes, how IHOP changes our pancakes. We have pumpkin spice pancakes. We, have, we can make an apple cinnamon pancake. Um, how fun it would be to try a sherry and, or a rose water at home. Um, Shakespeare pancakes, this, he wrote a, a play and he talked about putting in pancakes and that's another original source. It was in, uh, this little link here, it's gonna take us to that original source. And I just found this by Googling, you know, Shakespeare and pancakes. And here's the food literature and here is the source. And I kind of blow this up and we read it. So it says cinnamon, sugar, nutmeg, pepper, saffron, uh, I think amber, Probably coleander, uh, anti, I think it's that licorice flavor thing, and a hint of comfort. Um, and different, this is the how they made their pancakes. So, uh, this was the recipe, and it was a good wife's handmade for the cookery in her kitchen and dressing all manner of meat with other wholesome diet for her and her household. And it just we just talk about that. And the, here it is. It's in right in English right here down here for you to. And if you're a fifth grade teacher um, in uh, uh, U.S. history, they uh, have probably had that covered with Colonial Williamsburg about he, how people wrote and um, what the lettering, how it's different, but it's, it's that the same, um, the different style of writing at that time. So here is. A modern translation. Oh, they have talk about raisins, 
what kind of grapes, bay, barberries, paper white and brown seeds, rose water, rye flour, ginger cloves, mace dates, cherries conserved, seasoned and unseasoned spinach. So these are just some of the things that they could have put in their pancake. So it was like a meal for them. Okay. Then a renaissance where everybody loves pancakes. And they also talked, they used a lot of pudding. And we talk about what uh, poem or childhood poem we know about curds and whey and uh, uh, Jack Thumb put in his thumb. Uh, we talk about some of those poetry things that kids might have heard. Then we talk about how Shrove Tuesday is to, related to Easter and um, what Lent is. And it talks about uh, they were getting rid of their rich foods and what's in a pancake but eggs butter and milk and so they would use them that's how that became a tradition for shrove tuesday and then we talk about fat tuesday mardi gras that's familiar to most of them and i take them to a britannica site for uh, uh, looking at another primary source there flip and run pancake fun and this is a uh, the tradition that still goes on i took them to the only pancake race in uh, England, we know that we have that in Kansas. Uh, Kansas has the same thing. Uh, don't they have an only Kansas where they do their racing? So um, the kids really um, learn a lot of history and what makes pancakes so popular and why. So, and so far back in the history of man. So kind of cool. And this is the race and so we kind of watch some videos off of here and we we talk about their costumes what they're wearing and it's the women that are running and you can see they've got their uh, uh skillets cast iron skillets most of them it looks like maybe some of them might have some modern day cookery and um how they're flipping their pancake as they run and so just kind of a fun thing we talk about maybe one of these days we could take a trip And then that is one day. Once you get to the science of pancakes, you're going to use this for a later date or for your older students. So for me as a science teacher, I use this in my chemical reactions unit. And so I did it with my seventh and eighth graders and um, at Putnam City. And then I've done it with this last group of uh, seventh and eighth, uh, seventh grade kids because I know they have this in science. And they weren't doing a lot of labs. So I just kind of, this was another day that we did the science of pancakes. Um, so that just kind of walks you through the leavening ingredients. And that's all on the lesson that uh, our uh, egg in the classroom has. So we're pretty good there. Okay, go back here. So one of the things that once you're getting ready to do the bagging is you want to have these cards printed off and make sure everybody understands that you're going to use a Ziploc bag. And so here's one right here. Uh, yes, I normally have them pre-done all except for this bag. I do the egg whites in front of them. Whip up the, if I have eight eggs being used, I whip up eight, eight, the eight egg whites and um, they have to come get the egg white from me. Uh, and that's a job. So they would bring this bag and I would give them the egg white. Then they would go get the tablespoon of oil. And uh, I kind of showed here, these are the products that are made in Oklahoma products that we've been talking about. And so I did, um, so these are, their, these are their jobs. So somebody has to hold the Ziploc bag securely and open it and close it when it's needed. So that's one job. And that's your team jobs. Okay, next, I wanted to, so I think, I think Dana and I, can you see us and my screen? I think Dana and I Yes, are, I can. We're gonna go ahead, yesterday I had them pre-done and today we're gonna to do them together. So we'll start with the big bag and I wrote on them. You could have the students write on them with the Sharpie, the ingredient, what goes in each bag or you could pre-do it. Or I pre-done it myself just for the sake of time because you know 40 minute classes go zip. Um, so we're gonna take a cup of flour and um, for you, 
for uh, kids that need a little extension and a little more help with fractions, uh, that means extending learning so or enriching the learning. I would only give them a half. They have to figure out how many cups of that they need for the cup. Then, or I might give uh, more advanced math kids a, a third, you know, for a cup. So they have to figure that out. Then the next thing Dana's going to get is a, it, a tablespoon of clabber girl and sugar. And you can have these pre down out in little cups. I love those little red solo cups that you can get at the dollar store. I keep those because they're nice and heavy and I just reuse them over and over for this kind of stuff. Um, and you can get a little plastic, little like one inch rectangle, two inch rectangles from the dollar store too. And they're nice and heavy and sturdy. And I just wash them up. Um, that's, that's a class job. Somebody takes it to the sink and washes everything up for me. So you can have the kids do that. You can have them use the tablespoon. The kids who need, uh, need a little more challenge that know their fractions easy and you want to keep them thinking, you can just give them a teaspoon and they have to figure out how many teaspoons are in a tablespoon. Um, and that way you're not having to get 15 cups. You know, I use the, I just, I, what they get is what they get. And, and so we do that. So we've got the dry ingredients. The next thing we're going to do is the wet ingredients. So Dana's going to get the one egg yolk, so you can get this. I'm gonna give her the bowl. And she'll place the white in the bowl, and then she'll place the egg in the bag. And I'm modeling this as before my kids get ready to do anything. There we go. And then she's going to get, uh, she's going to wash her hands. <laughs> and that's, um, I was always fortunate. I had a sink in my classrooms. And so I would do everything where that sink was. So kids had access to the sink easy. And then she needs a cup of milk. And I just use that one over again. So these are some things, if you need measuring cups, that could be something you put on the grant that you're going to, you're going to buy, you know, five sets of measure, a measuring cup set. So there's that. And we also talk about making sure whoever the zipper or the bag holder is, that it's nice and tight and secure. And so then we're going to, Dana's going to take, somebody's going to be responsible for uh, mixing the dry ingredients together. And so she's just making sure it's all mixed up together. And then this person who has the wet ingredients goes over to the person who has the dry and they're responsible for, for getting it into the dry. And then she zips up her bag. And we talk and I'm showing them that when we're mixing it, we're not heavy handed that we're calm and we're laying it down on our countertop, our desk. I always place um, uh, plastic or I use bullet board paper to cover the desk for those spills and missteps. So she's getting that milk and that, that all together. And then um, her egg yolk, I'm Honey, going to, I'm going to interrupt and let you know that you only have three minutes left. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, her, so her, yeah. So her egg yolk, I demonstrate that, what that looks like. And so, you know, that we have to, uh, I'm going to turn it this way. So you can see me that way. Can you see me there? And so I demonstrate using this and mixing it all up. I pre-do this sometimes, and they just come and I give them like a cup of the egg white, and then they go back and put it in the bag. Yeah, that was. And a tablespoon of vegetable oil goes in, and then we fold it. <laughs> we fold that in. We fold 
that into the back. Not a stupid, it's okay. We talk about folding, and that's doing about first things first, making sure that the thing we did is then we gently lay it down on the table and we fold it just like that, and they um, get the idea of what folding is. I said, it's okay if you see some of your uh, egg whites, it's okay. Yeah. So, so we talk about that. So that's, and then we, and I let, then somebody has the job to be the pancake flipper. And somebody has the job to be cleaning all this up. And the first group that gets cleaned, I always have a gift bag for. So it could be pig pencils, it could be erasers, um, it could be pig stress balls that you find somewhere. So I always give, give a prize for the first group that's got their table cleaned up and all their stuff uh, ready to sit down and eat. And um, that takes about 40, 45 minutes, and then they enjoy their pancake and they grade themselves as they're doing, as they're eating. Any other things I need to help you with? I don't think so. Ladies, you did a fantastic job, and I just want to let you know that you had um, five participants that watched you the other day and watched again today. And so I think they're very pleased because I feel like you did. Um, two different presentations. You, you included the same information, but you, you gave a different spin on it. And so yep. I'm sure that they appreciate that. And we appreciate you ladies doing such a great job. 